Don't we see it, my brothers and sisters? The passing of I night elders, and with the recent passing of Ross ESP Max Sears, don't we recognize that it's it's a changing of the guard? I, I think I had mentioned in, in the promise key. I think we have the promise key if we, if we still have it over here. I would we'll probably put it put it in the next part while studying um, the promise key. Um, there's two versions of it that we recommend. One is by Miguel um, Lauren, um, a Jamaica advocate or, or, or lawyer, attorney. Um, and then there's the one which uh, Ross ESP McPherson went through a very diligent annotation of. And this, this brother, his acumen, it's like he, he brought such a a maturity, you understand, and it was paving the way for us to really deal with the issues of the kingdom of, of governance from that from that root of Ethiopianism. And this is a brother who I only read about Ethiopianism in the past, you know, back in the in the nineteen twenties and the nineteen thirties, you know, with ones like Reverend um, James Morris Webb and ones like um, Rabbi um, Arnold Josiah Ford and Rabbi um, Wentworth Arthur Matthews and, and, and the great Dr. Malaku E. Bayan. But this brother, Ras E.S.P. McPherson, he was keeping, holding that torch. You understand? He was holding that torch up high, you understand, and making sure that that light, whether one's going to look at that light or not, you understand, because there were many ones who felt that that was too intellectual, you know, many ones who felt that, well, you, you know, that I could not really receive it, this is why we say we feel that he was, he was a brother and who was somewhat ahead of his time, but it's, it's kind of, I don't want to say amazing, but we see that his work is going to be more received, it seems, in time to come than it was in time that has passed. And um, this is all part of this Torah portion right here. In fact, when we first recorded on this particular Torah portion, the Master Medical study on the Sabbath scroll, and that Salam number 39, we touched on the eight, the eight summary of the eight major items. First, we touched on the red heifer, right? The red heifer, the Pala Numa, touched on Miriam's death and the link of Miriam with the Echit Haru culture of ancient Egypt it was going to go forward to the water from a rock or the water from the rock and this is also a very important crucial a crucial teaching right here now we know that the rock is Christos the rock is the Moshiach then there was the emissary to Edom then coming right after that, we have what? Aaron's death. Aaron's death. Now, there are two particular passings in this particular Torah portion. One is Miriam, and the other one is Aaron. And before we got news of this, in fact, a brother had texted us, and we didn't even check the text. And then we, you know, um, I and I, say, forgive I and I, and I apologize for not checking that text, but then when we checked the text, it was on the evening, probably around the same time as we were getting ready for the, the Torah portion, and was focusing more on the, the teaching of this particular portion, that that particular text had come through, and 
you know, it was just the end of the heat wave, too. So, you know, just even thinking about all of that, not knowing what the brothers' um, situation was, Ross, ESP, McPhears, and I, and I, L, the situation was, whether he was hospitalized or what the particular situation is. And we feel duly sad in the sense of not, you know, not doing more, even though one will say, well, what more? We always could do more, and this is a time to even let other ones know, must do more, must learn about our great Rastafari elders, those ones who, whose labor of love, as the scripture says, whose, 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 whose works follow, you understand, whose works follow them, you know, so even after their so-called passing, you know, the whole passing of a, a generation from roughly the 60s, you understand, coming up to the 70s, to the present time in this 21st century and in the Ethiopian new millennium. I think that was roughly around, perhaps the last time that we had a, a voice contact that I and the elder, Ron C.S.P. McPherson, um, um, had spoke. But I'm, I'm linking this, and in the spirit of it, I'm seeing how it's connected with this Torah portion right here. And then the bigger picture of who we are in this diaspora, in this wilderness. He was almost as a voice that was crying out in the wilderness. He was, he was diligent, you understand, to that study, investigation, and also summarizing the key points you will send even the political, the international, the governmental level of Rastafari. So when we speak about theocracy, when we speak about monarchy, and even the support for the imperial family, you understand, it was all within his works. You really need to, he has several volumes out there. He was very prolific as a, as a scholar, as a, as, a, as a teacher, an educator and as a writer, and so he has disseminated much, much, much over the years in, in printed form, in, 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 in audio form, in, in radio interviews, in, in newspaper articles, and almost even single-handedly, he was always on that front line. And I think it's very, very important for I and I, as Rastafari, to both know our elders' name. If we want to say a elder in truth who meets that standard that has been set by the King of Kings himself, in I and I own humble opinion, this brother, the Honorable, the late Honorable um, Ross E.S.P. McPherson is one who truly meets that standard and it's his works that you really need to get a copy. We can't even suggest which particular book you should get. You can get it through I and I website and links with the Amazon books and we don't know who is who is in charge of that particular legacy. Who will continue um, the various different movements that Ross ESP McPherson has spearheaded. And we hope and pray that there were ones in his camp that will find the, the spiritual rock of the true faith to continue and to keep up that particular work and to keep his, his, his the documents, the books, the volumes that he has written out there and for us because it's very, very crucial. I, I must say even I and I self, I and I was honored to meet the brother and to reason with him and to, and to learn of his wisdom as one of those elders who, I, I mentioned this before, there's um, Prince Nazar. How many of you all know of Prince Nazar? This is one of the brethren when I and I was just coming forward in the last story. There were several brothers who printed their own books, you know, who printed their own books and disseminated their own ideas before there were all these resources that we even have now. And then when we look at, well, what are we doing at this present time? 
compared to what the elders did in the previous time with less resources, with less social media, with less internet. There was no internet. You understand? But those brothers kept us networked. But there was there were others of that generation, just like with Aaron and, and Miriam and even Moses. There were others of that particular generation. You understand as well. And remember what happened. That whole generation basically wandered in the wilderness. And then it came to the point in time where the new generation, where there will be a new generation that would cross over Jordanos, would cross over the Jordan, and would go in to inherit that land. But there was a previous generation, so this is a this this is a this is symbolic of that passing of the God, as we mentioned. There's there's um Mama Bubbles, who we heard of her passing recently. I think it was here in um. New York, or at least in the United States, I believe it was, I think, think so, it was New York, there's, um, Ras, um, Sikra Selassie, or Dr. Gladstone Robinson, who also has passed recently, there was, um, Bongo, um, um, um Bongo Rocky, you understand, the elder in Ethiopia, and there's, there's, there's others, who perhaps maybe were not on the front lines and their names we do not know of, but there's a whole passing of a generation. So to you, the Rastafari, who are tuned into this particular channel and this particular dissemination of our ancient Ethiopian culture and our divine heritage, please make note of Ras ESP McPherson. And please do your best to, to study up on his documents, his research, especially on the matter of Ethiopianism. What is Ethiopianism? Why is Ethiopianism so important to I and I, the Ethiopians abroad, as well as the Ethiopians at home and those native Ethiopians from home? You understand? This is what brings us together. But the enemy, Satan, the adversary, still is working hard to keep us divided and conquered, but it's only through ignorance, you understand, it's only through ignorance, it's only through not knowing, you understand, through not knowing, and they would like to keep us in ignorance, and this brethren, through his years and years of toil and tireless service, even when they were, he had very few supporters at many times, and we Myself and others witnessed this I and ourselves, and we tried to do what we could, but it shocked us. And here we had an elder who had it right. He understood it right and exact. You know, when a Rastafari elder calls you up and says, Brethren, I have a document, a presentation to make before the Ethiopian Council. I have a couple of other Rastafari brethren who are part of this delegation. Would you please join I and I? You understand? In such a thing. That that's like such so rare. And then to actually, you understand, even see the Ethiopians be surprised, but take this seriously, because this is a brother who's who's um research. We talk about his annotation. You talk about Dr. Bronner's bottle. You were saying you talk about footnotes and details and dates and times. These are things that we need in order to preserve our birthright, to prove our true name and nationality, and to build the foundation of our sovereignty based on I and I story in his so-called story, or in the history of the Goyim or the Gentiles. My brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm trying to gain that strength. Not trying, but doing, gaining that strength. Because if I think on it, and you know, we, we can't allow the sorrow, we can't allow the grief to overcome I and I, especially when we know that these ones who we might 
weep for and those that we miss, we know that they courageously um, fought the, the good fight, the good fight of I and I true faith in spirit, on the spirituality level of Rastafari, as well as the true political, um, um, you could say, the, the whole national, political, legal level. You know, so when we speak about I and I sovereignty, and we're speaking about sovereignty and issues of sovereignty, even I and I own letter to the United Nations on behalf of the society back in 1998 when Kofi Annan was the, was the Secretary General. No doubt, these were inspired by the works of Ross ESP McPherson. Because he, he proved to us, you know, said, that this could be done if one had the faith, the courage, and the just cause. My brothers and sisters, this brother Sinai is like an Aaron. He's was like a real Aaron. Aaron, Aaron. Aaron's name means the light or like the ark. You understand? Know he was like an, the ark in a sense, as Aaron was the high priest in a sense. And Aaron's name symbolizes the Ark, or the Tabo, the Ark of the Covenant in the Hebraic. This brother also preserved, what, what did the Ark preserve? The Ark preserved the Covenant. And what is this Covenant to I and I? It is our divine heritage that restores us into our true birthright. And also restores the Covenant divine, real-time covenant, my brothers and sisters. So, it's at Mount Hor, right? Hor as in Kheru, or Kheru, Hor, you understand? And we have Kher as in Igziyabi Kher, that God, or John, Igziyabi Yolotu Subhan, that Yahweh had told Moses and Aaron, let Aaron be gathered to his kin. He is not to enter the land that I have assigned to the Israelite people. And it says, because you disobeyed my command at the waters of Meribah. Now this is what Aaron did. You know what I'm saying? But then when we look at the 40-year generation, and we go back to 1960, 1967, many of these elders, are part of that 40-year generation. They did not go in. There were there were disobedience, and we don't know who who's to blame and leave all that judgment to John. Because if we were to judge it, we would need more information. We don't have enough information from that time. All we have is the divine word and the revelation of Rastafari to see how this word here is being manifest to us in this present time. It's a whole change of the guard. But are the new guards both willing and able to protect, right, to protect as well as to promote that which is worthy of our holy covenant? That's the question for all of us. That's the question we should be asking. Seeing these elders pass away, it should be having us look at I and I selves in the mirror and say, Ja, what would you have I and I to do in and through your son, Yeshua HaMashiach? For you have said, without me you can do nothing. Without Yeshua, without the Christ of His Majesty, we can do nothing. There's been a whole generation that has acknowledged the Father, but has not acknowledged, as a generation, the Father's teaching in spirit and in truth. But thanks be to the King of Kings, Pilate Selassie I, there are those that we can remember and pray for their soul, that Jah have mercy upon their soul, because they have left us a legacy that is more valuable than silver and gold. And once again, I encourage all of you brethren and sisters, at least get one 
book. Start out with just one book. You know what I'm saying? By this elder, Ross ESP, like this. It will be very crucial to, then you will be able to understand what, why I'm focusing on this particular point so much. You know what I'm saying? Don't be like that other generation, for this is a new generation. This is not the 20th century Rastafari. This is the 21st century. This is the new millennium Rastafari. Make I and I learn, you understand, from the past. And let us consolidate that which is in conformity with the will of the King of Kings and his Christ. And let's discard everything else that is not, because that would only hold us back. And we already have that, that, that living testimony. I and I is that living testimony. So Moses took Aaron and his son Eleazar up to Mount Hor, and there he stripped Aaron of his vestments and put them on Eleazar. And it says that Aaron, he died there in Numbers chapter 20, verses 25 to 28. And the Beta Israel mourned for Aaron 30 days. They mourned for Aaron 30 days. You know, there is a time of weeping. You know what I'm saying? And there's a time of, of, of joy. I think it's only right for those who do know the importance of this particular brother and, in a sense, what we have lost, but moreover, what he has given his life, his labor of love for I and I. Let us not waste that. Let us take advantage of that. Because it's John who gave him that strength to do that in season and out of season. For whose sake? For I and I's sake. That's the true demonstration of of, of labor, of love. Now, here's what I want to share with the eye, this particular portion right here. This is very, very interesting. This is not this is not to be interpreted in any sense personally with I and I brother who has just passed. But it, it gives I and I some way of in a sense of they say coping with these sort of situations in a way in which his Imperial Majesty, Kadamawi Haila Shalase, Haila Shalase I, would be pleased. And that is according to the B I B L E. And um, it's interesting because I was reading this the other day. It says that there's a Sifra which taught that when Moses saw the merciful manner of Aaron's death, that Moses concluded that he would want to die in the same way. Now, the Sifra, which was a particular writing, it taught that Ha Elohim, the true God, the triune God, told Aaron to go in a cave and to climb onto a beer, a beer like a funeral bed, like from ancient Egypt, that particular type right there, like Osiris laid on that, to spread his hands spread his legs, to close his mouth, and to close his eyes. And then, Aaron died. At that moment, Moses concluded that one would be happy to die that way. And that is why Ha Elohim later told Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 50 that Moses would die, quote, as Aaron, your brother, died on Mount Hor, and was gathered to his people, end quote. For that was the manner of death that Moses wanted. It's very interesting here because it goes on to say in the Midrash that interpreted the words from Numbers chapter 20, verse 29, that all the aggregation or the congregation, the Machibur, saw that Aaron was dead. It's like when I got the word of elder brother Ross E.S.P. McPherson. 
you know when you hear something but you would hope that you didn't hear what you heard but you know you heard what you heard so you don't dispute it but you're just trying to adjust your spirit to it it's like this verse here and all of the aggregation the congregation saw that Aaron was dead we checked a couple of different links and found a few links here and there and I said you know, I, 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 I didn't doubt it, but you just, you wanted, not to make sure, but you like, for real, for real, like, you like, and, and, and then it begins to, then, then that, that sense of, that righteous sense of, of weeping. David even wept for Saul and Jonathan, and that is supposed to be I and I example. You know what I'm saying? Especially with those whose whole life was not um, so-called dedicated to selfishness in themselves, but was livicated to Jairus the Farai and I and I, his people, Ethiopians at home and abroad. The Midrash taught that when Moses and Eleazar descended from the mount without Aaron, that the three of them went up but only two of them came down. All the congregation assembled against Moses and Eleazar and demanded to know where Aaron was. And this is one of the reasons why when, when we first heard it, that he has passed, we didn't really respond, kind of like we went and took a look at the, at the computer, but didn't want to look at it, but yet in a sense was like, who's saying this? And I'm all like, how do we know that it's correct? And then on my own phone, a brethren had, when I was about to begin this Torah portion, had text I and I, that particular message. The text must have went under the radar and I, I didn't get it. And um, that is one who might be a cousin. I and I, brother, brother Ether, if you check this out, um, just hit on the eye up and may Josh strengthen you also in this time as well. You know, those who are close to ones sometimes feel it much more than some of you who might not even know who this brother is or what he was to I and I and may need to get a clarification of who he will be to us based on the work and the legacy that he has left all of I and I. This is I and I Commonwealth. So get invested in it, get informed, um, and get involved. Get informed and get involved. So when Moses and Eleazar answered that Aaron had died, that he had passed on, that he had transitioned, the aggregation objected that surely the angel of death could not strike one who had withstood the angel of death. If you recall in the earlier scene, that Aaron had withstood the angel of death and had restrained him as reported in Numbers chapter 17 verse 13 quote and he stood between the dead and the living he stood Aaron stood between the dead and the living and the plague the plague was stayed I would I would say that I and I brother Ross BSP McPherson, Ross Everton, was also one who, in a sense, did this very same thing concerning Rastafari, the Ethio, Rastafari connection of I and I people at home and abroad, that he stood between those who were living, who were conscious of that sovereignty, of that Ethiopianism, and those who were still dead to it, who were unconscious of it and thereby a plague or a destruction was stayed from this people even because of works like the works of our elder brother Ross Everton my fears. so the aggregation demanded that Moses and Eleazar bring Aaron back so even when I'm saying wow I have to let my brothers and sisters know about this because I mean, but just trying to get my own 
vibes around it, you know, like just to center yourself, center yourself in Yeshua, in Jesus Christo, in the Christ of His Majesty, so you can even enter into the Father's house through the gate, so you can have that strength and even not fall to these emotions sometimes, you know, when you start to think like the world thinks about the passing or the death of one. So we're in the world, but we're not to be of the world. So even when I and I say transition or return to the to the pure triune God, to the spirit and the truth of God, it's a different way of saying it. Or the Kibbutz and the Geth says that the righteous, those who truly are Adikan, those who truly are Christian, that they do not die. So whenever you hear so-called Christian people talking about the death of other Christian people, you have to be very curious about what form or deformity of Christianity are they dealing with. Because right there in the scripture we can show you, as we have done from the fits of the guests. Um, the congregation demanded that Moses and Eliezer bring out and back or they would stone Moses and Eliezer. So I did not want to present a report that somehow, some way, might have turned into a false report, especially about a beloved one, that I did not want to even accept this as being the truth. And the number of times I, I try to hold back tears, but I had to allow these tears is sometimes an inja, the right way of purifying, so sometimes you have to let it out, but not to, to sorry and, and be grieved as though one did not know Ja, as though one did not know Yeshua, as though one did not know the true and living God, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. See, for those who did, don't know Christ, the black Christ, Christ in his kingdom character. There's somebody to feel sorry for them, but every goodie should have known whom Kedamawi Haila Selassie is. And we know that I and I, the love elder brother, knew who Kedamawi Haila Selassie is. And we pray to him in the name of Yeshua he keep the soul of all of our departed, beloved ones, brethren, and sister, from now, henceforth, and even for I the Lord. Moses prayed to God to deliver them from suspicion. So Moses had to pray to John because the people could not accept that this is the one who had already went through such things, and even we saw the, the vid of him, and we saw a couple of pictures of him, and to us, he's, he looked healthy, you know, and, and white, white elder beard, and all of that. You know, he spoke still passionately, even though we had not um, directly fellowshiped, because we were on different fronts. You understand? However, he still was, you know, he still was consistent to the one who we met so many years ago, nearly 20 years ago. So this, the aggregation in the, concerning um, Aaron, you know, they were upset at Moses and Eliezer. They felt that something might have gone wrong, as even many times we will think, like when we hear of such news, that perhaps sometimes that might be, that suspicion might be worthy. We don't have that in such a situation, and we hope and pray that there is not any suspiciousness, you understand, regarding the passing of I and I, beloved elder. But Moses prayed to John to deliver them from suspicion, to deliver them from suspicion. And John immediately opened the cave and show the aggregation Aaron's body as reflected by the words as reflected by the words um, of Numbers 20 and 29 that quote 
all the congregation, the Machaber, the Kubai, saw that Aaron was dead. And you know, I know I've been linking this and likening this, but this is this is I hope I would have been able to overstand this at any other time, but happening at this particular time and with this particular Torah portion that we have here. Jano, Jano, my brothers and sisters. No doubt we'll reason a little bit more on this. Um, uh, Fitz and Neges really, really gives us our divine heritage about how even I and I are to handle these sort of a situation. And I had read this before, this chapter 22 of the first part of the Fitz and the Guess. It says to us that in the church, the Beta Christian, and that's I and I gathering, those who gather in the name of the King of Kings and His Christ, that's the church, where two or three are gathered together in His name. You shall gather without laziness to read the holy books and to say songs for those who are asleep, such as the martyrs and the former saints, the former Kedusan, all true Aras Teferi are Kedusan, are holy ones. And for your brethren who are asleep or who are resting and were mitmanan in Gitachin, were mitmanan in Adonendu, in our Lord, in our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, says, offer for them in your church, in your gathering, the prayer of sacrifice, which is his holy body and his precious blood, to the King of Heaven, even to the King of Kings. Offer it to say Salamta, to say farewell, to say Shalom. To the, to the Rastafari, to the one who sleeps, to the one who now, from this world, rests in the bosom of Father Abraham. If he was faithful to Christos, if he was faithful to Christ, and nothing that I know of by the testimony of this particular brother betrays anything to the contrary, in fact, such a labor of love is a demonstration of his faithfulness to the black Christ, to the true Christ, to Christ in his kingly character without apology. The prophet David has said this, precious before Adonai is the death or the passing of his Kedusan, of his saints. He also said, turn, O my soul, to thy rest. For Adonai has been bountiful to thee. Now these two words coming from, I think, Psalm 115 and some Bibles 117 are crucial. Jot these words down. These are very, very important words, both to be said for those who have passed on, as well as to keep your own heart and mind, spirit, soul, and body, your own psychic state, if you understand, in, in the proper relationship. But sometimes when these things happen, sorrow and, and, and grief will come on, and the, the elders have taught us that a wound in the spirit or the soul becomes an entry for Satan or sin. So when we chant these songs, when we keep this divine remembrance, when we meditate on these words with, with, with overstanding, when we chant the songs with overstanding, they act as mantras or protections for our state of mind. You understand? And Amen. Those who, my men, 
those who are made, those who had faith in, true and living faith in Adonai, in the black Lord, do not die. They do not die. They do not die. The Sitanagas is telling us that those who have faith in the Lord, in the true Lord, in in our Lord, in our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshir, Jesus Christos, they do not die. So when Ainaz Rastafari say that, Ainaz Rastafari, in the King of Kings and through his Christ, Ainai do not die. And this is right here in the fifth of Neges. Those who it says believe, but that is Mamen, that means to have true and faithful witness in Adonai, do not die. As was said by Adonai to the Sadducees. So our Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMushiach, whom the King of Kings teaches us and demonstrates to us, the Emare, uh, has so said that those who have faith, who are mitmenon, who have Amen in our Black Lord and Savior Yeshua, they do not die. Therefore, the bones of those who are living in Adonai are not despised or defiled because the prophet Elias, Elisha, after his death, made the dead man killed by the Syrian soldiers rise. When the body of the dead man touched the bones of Elisha, he came back to life and rose. This happened because the body of Elisha, or Elisha, was saintly, it was kedus and pure. Joseph, Joseph the wise, also embraced the body of Yaakov, his father, on the bed after he died. Similarly, Moses, Mashu, Muse, and Joshua, Yehoshua, brought with them the body of Joseph. And it was not considered as a hatiyat. It was not considered as a sin on their part. We also, O oh bishops and laymen, must take care of the body of the one who is dead. You must not despise that those who are men, those who have our main, that you will be, you know, you must not despise the body, you must not have a false faith or, 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 or admit in something that's not true that you're going to be contaminated by doing so, nor shall you therefore despise their bones. It is said in the canons written for the kings, and we know that the king of kings, this is the version of the king of kings authorized. So let's understand what we're learning here. You know, since one part we receive by inspiration or revelation, you know, saying concerning I and I and I die. But that's the fit and the guess. That's just the teaching of fit and the guess. You know, saying, now that we have these documents, we can truly see the iritical, the spiritual revelation of Ras Teferi. So we receive it in spirit, and now we find the document and evidence here in truth. It says, it is said in the canons written for the kings, when a woman dies in childbirth or sh dies shortly after giving birth to a child, she shall be bathed and wrapped in other clothes, not used during her childbirth, and prayers must be said over her body in church, because death has purified her. The dead body must be bathed before being wrapped. This is not an invention. In other words, the wrapping, the mummification, I was about to say when I was in the midbar that when they when 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 Aaron climbed on the on the beer or the palaquin, the Meshemekia, you understand, that is the same thing you have in ancient Egypt. That's the very same thing that you see in ancient Egypt. I don't know if I could show you an example of this. Because, you know, there's some ideas in Rastafari that are out there. 
and some of the ideas might have a, a true reference point, you know, but until we invest in the teaching of His Majesty, how will we distinguish, you know, and how will we be able to try every spirit? We heard a word spiritually, how are we able to try whether that word is really true, unless it's by and through the study of His Word. We don't have an example right here, but you know the picture of, um, of Osiris lying on the kind of the couch. You know what I'm saying? That's what the beer right there is. And the wrapping, like the Lefafa Siddiq, the Lefafa Siddiq, the bandolet, or the wrapping in that sense of righteousness. It was the wrapping, like the mummification, which is the ancient Ethiopic, you know what I'm saying? The ancient Ethiopic order. It was the true order of Jah. And this is why it was preserved to some extent even in ancient Egypt and the base of Israel continued it. And even within the Ethiopic church on the higher levels, this is still done. And we have to understand this until we have that full redemption to wit of the body, the ocean, and we fully gain that, 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 that twinkling of an eye transformation, but still, there's work to do, you understand? But that is still the true hope, you understand, of all of us as Kedusan. Some of us may pass on as the elders have, and we will see them later. They are the righteous. We will see them later. Others will be living when that time of transformation from mortality to immortality. So that's, that's the real hope. You know what I'm saying? That's the real, true hope of the true Rastafari. Anyone who tells you otherwise is contradicting the teaching of His Majesty. And it's not really worthy for them to carry that name Rastafari and not be a true and faithful witness to their namesake. Now, here it's basically saying that it's not an invention. For the book of Acts of the Apostles says that Tabitha, the disciple whom whom Pedro saw Peter made rise up was bathed after her death. Thus, if it were wrong, a wrong thing, the faithful would not have done it in the time of the disciples. And we know that they did not forbid them to do so. Moreover, get this, the dead or those who have passed on, they are only dirty or unclean in that sense because of the traces of their sickness. And it is for that reason that they should not be brought into the church before they are bathed. See, the, this, is, this is maturity. This is growth. It's not that I not look forward to that. But when those situations happen to a true and a faithful community, these are the instructions here for I and I people. If the dead person is a priest, the one who has passed, he shall be placed before the altar of God of Jah in the sanctuary. If he is a layman, he shall be placed under the altar. Then the archpriest shall offer Aishan incense with prayer to Jah in thanksgiving. After him, the ministers shall read selected passages from the Psalms, passages dealing with the hope of true resurrection, a resurrection about which we have no doubt. That's what makes the Mitmanon. The Mitmanon have no doubt about the Tinshai, the Tinsai, the resurrection. And passages dealing with the confession of chatiyat, the confession of sin, of falling short, of missing the mark. These confessions which are acceptable to John. It's not good enough to say that John knows my heart. Confession is made for salvation. The righteousness we must have in our heart, in our consciousness. But that confession, that professional, that's what seals to say, 
so to speak, the deal spiritually. Not just having it in your heart and not saying nothing, but both having it and speaking on it. See, some people have it in their heart, but they don't want to speak on it because they don't want to suffer nothing for truth and rights. And then we wonder why the movement seems to be in a state of inertia. And we want to know, well, what can we do to get it out of inertia, get informed of the teaching of His Majesty and His Christ, and live it. After this, the Archbishop shall go forward and pray over him. At the end of the salute, he shall kiss him, saying, Farewell. And after him, all those present shall kiss him. Then the Archbishop shall pour oil over him and recite over him the appropriate prayer. Then his body shall be placed in an honored place near the pure bodies of those who were his equals in rank. Now, this goes on a little bit more. We're not going to go through all of the details right here, but it's very important that you check this out. I mean, there's more information in here for us in the liberty. You know what I'm Rastafari, and in our covenant, and in Ethiopianism. You know what I'm that, 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 that gives us the true foundation. This is the law of kings. If we do not live within our own God-given covenant and based on our own God-given laws, guess what? You're going to live under the Gentile laws. And that's not sovereignty, my people. So, firstly, get informed and then get involved. My brothers and sisters, I've been strengthened somewhat by just focusing on what John's word is to us at this time, but still it's a, still it's a heavy thing, you know loss of one of I and I brethren and as as the word even right here within um, the twenty second chapter says precious before John is the death or the passing of his son. And now when I think about the storms and everything that just came through the New York area and even this whole region even that there can be received by the faithful just as a sign, even as a token. Turn, O oh my soul, to thy rest, for John has dealt bountifully to me. I and I, brother, Ras EST, rest in the bosom of Abraham Shalom, Ras.